Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2024, and I'll be walking through an edit of a photo that I took in Wales. It's kind of a landscape slash cityscape. Those are the two subjects that I shoot most often. And what I'm walking uh, through and talking about in this image and in this video is kind of my three-step approach in terms of how I like to edit these photos that I find works every single time. Now, it would be different for portraits, but because I shoot landscapes and cityscapes, the approach I'm going to walk through in this video, I think, uh, just is flawless in terms of the ability to give you the end result that you want without having to do, frankly, a ton of work. Uh, and that's what I like about On One. They just make things kind of easy. Now, you may have heard me in previous videos talk about three different aspects of a photo that I like to edit, light, detail, and color. And that is true, and I'll walk through those aspects in this edit. But this is a three-step approach to using the tools, and the way On One is set up and organized to help me get this done is, honestly, it's just perfect. So let's get into it. Here's the image. I've already taken spots out, and hopefully I got them all. Uh, and I cropped it, and I think I straightened it a little bit. But what I want to do, step one for me, is Develop tab. And if you're guessing Develop and Local and Effects, you're absolutely right. That's the three-step approach. And within each of those, there's some different things that I like to do to really control my final edit. But I'm going to walk through that here in this video. Now, I'm going to start with Brilliance AI, which I think is a great place to start. And I think, in you know, my experience so far, really does a great job of just giving me a good starting point. So as you can see here, it jumped in immediately and has done a really a good job of getting me started. Now, I don't really ever look at Brilliance AI as being a one-click solution. I consider it a jumping off point, and it kind of gets me going in the right direction. I definitely like to fine tune and kind of adjust things, and that's in step two when I get into local. But we're not done on develop because there's several components of develop that I think are super critical for when you're starting out. So Brilliance AI, that's my first step, and I like it so far. And you may know that it automatically identifies different areas in a photo and creates those local adjustments, which includes the mask, of course, for those areas. I love that, and that's one of the things that I think is so great about starting this way. It just takes care of some things for you, creates mass, and really just gets you going. So that's the first section in develop, but the second one is tone and color. Now, when you open that, you will know uh, from using this before that when you use Brilliance AI, it's making tone and color adjustments, which I like, and I'm pretty happy with this. I think I will do a couple of minor things, uh, and these are just kind of some touch-ups that I'm going to do. Slight increase in contrast, slight reduction in highlights. And the only other thing I want to do here, and I tend to save color for the end of my edit, but I do play with temperature and tint quite a bit uh, when I'm here in develop. So I'm going to go a little bit warmer just a little bit. I do want to bring up that sunset look, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of tint. And that's just a personal preference because I like having a little bit of tint in my sunset photos. Maybe not quite that much because I'm going to use some color tools here in a minute. So something about like that I think looks great. So Brilliance AI, tone and color. And for me, the third step is lens correction. I just think it's super critical to really uh, you know, make adjustments to any distortion that you may have in your image. I think that looks really good. It's one click, and that's a great thing about On One. It has all these different camera makes and lens models available here in case it doesn't identify the right one. But I feel like 99% of the time it nails it, and I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So for me, step one is develop, which includes the, uh, Brilliance AI, tone and color, and lens correction. But as you can see already, honestly, I mean, we've made a huge, huge improvement in the photo. So before, after, there we go. So now that I've done step one, develop, we're going to go into step two, and that is on the local tab. Okay, as I said, uh, Brilliance AI identifies automatically several regions in the photo. It identified water, sky, and flora. Now, the flora is very small, and one of the things I generally do when I get here is just turn these on and off to see what they do. And if I turn that off, there's a little bit like in the sand and stuff. It's not enough to make a difference for me, so I'm going to go ahead and click the X just to remove that because it's not something that I, A, notice, and B, really need to make an adjustment to. Uh, the same is actually true for the water. So in this case, it identified the water, and it makes a little adjustment to it, but again, I don't need that, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it, and I'm left with just the sky. But there's one thing I want to do, and this is something I typically do in the local adjustment tab, and that is I want to come in with another mask, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and drop that new adjustment in place. And what I want to do is get the masking, uh, the linear gradient. I'm going to use linear top. And what I'm going to do is come over here and just drag this right up here because I want to slightly darken that foreground. So I need to tilt this a little bit. And I generally will uh, need to position this. So I'm going to pull this down slightly as well. And I think the gradient zone here, kind of the fade area, maybe I'll do a little bit more. 
So something about like that, it defaults to negative one exposure. I actually think that's fine. So if you look at the before, there it is quite a bit brighter and it's a little bit distracting to me visually. So that's why I wanted to add this mask. And if I turn that back on after a little bit darker kind of fades. Uh, but one thing I don't like about it is it's, uh, of course, because it's a linear gradient, it goes all the way across the photo. I need to remove it from part of this wall. So I'm gonna get the masking brush and I'm gonna get a race click on erase, and I'm going to take the opacity down to like maybe 70, 75, 80. I think 80 is fine. Go ahead and right bracket key to make my uh, masking brush a little bit bigger. And all I'm going to do is come along in over here and just erase at a slightly reduced opacity some of that darkening that's falling on this wall because I like that wall. It's a nice little bit of a uh, leading line that I feel like leads my eye to the castle and then the sky and, and all that. So all I wanted to do is remove that darkening from that area because I don't want to lose complete visibility there. So that's something I do is add local adjustments to adjust the light. Notice that we're still in light, uh, but make those adjustments. And if I need to refine the mask, couple the like erasing brush with like a linear gradient allows you to be targeted and pretty specific. And that so far is two steps out of three. So develop and local. So far, I feel like we're getting there pretty well, right? So before and current state. And of course, this is where you jump into the what I consider the fun, which is the effects. And as you probably know, is there's just a lot of different effects in on one, and they can just do so much for you. For me, uh, the effects tab, not always, not in every tool. And in fact, in this video, I'll do uh, one without a mask, but it's generally a mask 90 plus percent of the time because I want to take these effects and target them pretty specifically most of the time, not always. But first thing I want to do is go ahead and get a dynamic contrast filter. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And what that does is give me a little bit of crunch, a little bit of detail, but I don't want it everywhere. So I'm going to go into masking. And here I'm going to get a luminosity mask, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to click that and it creates a mask. So if I show you the mask, you can see, by the way, if you're not familiar with the luminosity masking in on one and how it works, I don't have the time in this video to go through it. But if you want to see more, leave a comment down below, just say masking or luminosity masking or whatever, but there's so many powerful tools and they're really world-class in on one and I love to use them. So luminosity mask is in place. I like that. However, where I want the crunch is in the areas that are black or darker. So luminosity mask, because it's based on light values, more of the mask is applying to the lighter areas or more of the effect and less of the effect in the darker areas. Well, I want the opposite. So I'm just going to go over here and click that button, which reverses it. And so now you can see my mask 100% uh, will go into the white, 0% of this effect will go in the black, and then it kind of fades in the different shades of gray. But you can adjust that, and this is a really powerful option here in luminosity masking, and that is using this levels. And so I'm going to pull this down, and I'm just taking a little bit more of these brighter areas. This is based on the bright areas. On the right-hand side, that's highlights. Left-hand side, that's shadow. That's in the original image, not in the mask. Remember, I inverted it, so it gets a little backwards feeling at times, but all I'm doing is basically telling on one, hey, take this mask out of the really bright spots, like the sky, the water, and that sort of thing. And what I want is this uh, dynamic contrast to go into those uh, darker areas in the original photo, which are the brighter areas in the mask, again, because I inverted it. So just keep that in mind, play with levels. It's super powerful and you can really customize an image. But now my dynamic contrast applies in those areas. So if you look at the before, and the after, it's not enough to make a huge impact. Uh, I might pull it up just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more crunch. But generally speaking, I like to add that kind of stuff to man-made structures, castles, walls, bridges, uh, houses, things like that. But it also looks pretty good on the beach. Now, the other thing is that in dynamic contrast, you've also got this uh, section here for tone. And so you could come in here and slightly brighten some of that area, pull up the shadows, maybe pull up the blacks, do a little bit like that just to further customize the image. And you can also go into vibrance and lift that a little bit. So I might give it a little bit more vibrance, not a ton, but I'm just trying to pop that area a little bit. Let me close this masking menu. So if you look at the before dynamic contrast and after, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use dynamic contrast one more time. Add filter. And in this time, I'm going to go straight to the sky. So I'm just going to click sky and selected that and click dynamic contrast. And so it's basically automatically created a mask for me right there in the sky. And so if I show you that, I click on it, you can see there again, levels may come in handy where you can just come in here 
and kind of compress those tonal areas so that you kind of customize and sharpen up those edges of the mask. You can see I've improved that quite a bit already. You can also come in with the brush and fix those little spots quick and easy. I'm not going to do that in this video, but it's really easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the regular view. My mask is in place and all I want to do is take uh, all these negative because again, I'm still playing with uh, a little bit of light, but really mostly detail here. Dynamic contrast, positive in the castle, bridge, etc. And now negative in the sky just to smooth it out. And uh, I think that looks nice. It's not a massive difference, but you can tell a little bit. So before and after, just a little bit smoother. Okay, I'm going to play a little bit with color now. And so still on uh, group three or section three, which is effects, but I want to go in at another filter. And this one is going to be color balance which is incredibly powerful and gives you a lot of different options for adjusting color. I'm not going to go into all these. I'm just actually going to use a preset here and I want to use this vivid warm and you put that on there and it is a lot of color. And again, this is where masking comes in. I, I love this about on one. It's so quick and easy just to come in and make a luminosity mask. And you will see as soon as it builds that luminosity mask, the intensity of that goes away because the mask varies based on the light value. So a little bit more going into the brighter areas, right? So if you look at the mask, white reveals, black conceals. So the brighter it is, the more of that color effect you're getting, and the darker it is, the less of it you're getting. And so that's um, a great way to add some color without really overdoing it. I used a preset which looked pretty strong, but as soon as I applied the luminosity mask, it's a lot more subtle and gentle and controlled. And I love that. And speaking of control, another thing to do is you can just pull down the opacity, which is another great feature, I think, in On One. So you have these opacity sliders on every tool. You can just come in and reduce that opacity and get the color look that you want. Pretty quick, pretty easy. And if you look at the before, a bit uh, less cool, or excuse me, more cool, less warm. And now with this color balance, I'm really starting to pop the warmth of that sunset. Two more quick moves just to kind of wrap it up. One thing I like to do kind of towards the end is to come in with a LUT and do kind of what you would consider essentially a color grade. I'm going to go in here to this Ashen, Achen, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's a nice little color look. And I'm just going to do a little bit of contrast, like a five or something like that, maybe a five or six, and a little bit of saturation, so like a 15 or so. And if you look at the before and after, that LUT has a nice little extra pop to the color. So before, that's the color balance is still there with the luminosity mask, but you add this LUT on top, you get a nice extra tiny little boost without really overdoing it. I love that. And then sometimes at the very end, especially on a sunset, I like to come in with the sunshine filter. I think that's a nice one to give you a nice little bit of kind of glow, for lack of a better word. Uh, and in this case, what I want to do is take this glow to about 20. And I like what it does, but it's a little too much. So once again, I'm just going to use a luminosity mask. I'm going to click on the masking menu. And uh, if you can't tell, I love luminosity masks. They're just so useful and uh, just powerful and they just allow you to apply things but in a lot more subtle manner because you get that variance across the image based on the light or tonal values. So now I've got this luminosity mask in place. Honestly, I'm fine with it. I don't feel like I need to change it at all. I could with the levels as I showed you before, but sunshine has a nice little pop, a little bit of glow to that sun uh, sunset. So if you look at the before, it's a little bit uh, darker and that sort of thing. But if you add this sunshine, it gives it this nice little pop a little bit of glow, especially in the brighter parts, because that's where the luminosity mask is strongest. And that's really my edit. So three different things I think about, light, detail, color, but the order of my approach, my workflow is really develop, local, and then effects. And honestly, it works on every photo. You can just get so many powerful and I think lovely results following this approach with landscapes and cityscapes before and after. That's how this one worked. And also, by the way, I will show you the sliding door uh, window kind of look. You can see my spots there. Hopefully I got them all, but the bottom line is lots of power, lots of control here and on one, and you can have an incredibly big impact. And you'll notice I wasn't using big numbers on any of these tools. It was just like kind of micro movements, some adjustments, masking to soften things up with like a luminosity mask and get a more gentle distribution of an effect across a photo. It's powerful. It's amazing. And I love it. That's how I work with On One for landscapes and cityscapes. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. And until next time, you guys take care and adios.